was chilly. The vapor that poured from his lungs reminded him of breath in the cold. He couldn't remember the last time he could see his breath. It seemed like it was all the time in winter as a kid. He could remember cold winters, waiting in the outdoor hallways of his elementary school for the teacher to open the doors, all the kids pretending to smoke, blowing out puffs of cold breath. These days, Florida only seemed to get a day or two of cold weather a year. But he couldn't remember the last time he could see his breath. He checked his phone to see where the bus was. It was no longer on the map. How could a bus just disappear? It was just a couple minutes away before. He decided he would wait a few minutes. After all, a bus can't actually just vanish, right? He had a flannel on under his denim jacket and he felt it might be a bit too many layers for the night. He took a long draw on his vaporizer and refreshed the app on his phone that tracked the buses. Of course, the bus was still gone. He decided to move on. He walked down the road, wet and cold, the lights reflecting off the puddles. Half an hour he walked. He never saw that bus. Sure looks nice over there The grass is cleaner and the air is cleaner They all seem happier over there Just across the water all their sons and daughters so dead and air. If only they knew. If only they knew what was coming. Maybe they could have. See over here it's all concrete and factories as far as the eye can see. We scorched the sky and blocked out the sun. Doing it for everyone. We always have. And the water began to rise. They had nothing to hold back the tide. All that green grass began to die.
miss me when you leave me, when you say you have to go. But I get it, baby. There's roaches in the kitchen, mold on the bathroom ceiling. Yeah, I get it. I'm not whining. I'm just, just over here all alone, pining for your love. Well, it hurts me when you leave me, when you say you have to go, but I get it, I'm not whining, I'm just pining for you so, there's roaches in the kitchen, and mold on the bathroom ceiling, but you love me in the mornings, and you love me in the evening for some reason. so long. Where does the time go? We seem to live so many lives with so many possibilities. We build and collect memories over years, and yet in the end, we always find ourselves unsure of how we got here. This path leads somewhere. I can't seem to remember where. to know this place like the back of my hand. The heat and humidity of the Florida air is paralyzing. It can drive a person crazy. Why do you think so many people end up flipping out down here, jumping off bridges, eating each other's faces off, mass shootings? It's a madhouse, and no one can escape it. Not for long. I've seen people try, they move off to California or Oregon, and they think they're gonna make it. They all end up right back here in the swamp eventually. Even I tried getting out once or twice myself, and never took. I know this path leads to something, I just wish I could remember what. Sweat drips in my eye and it stings. My vision goes blurry. Down the wooden path, trenched in shadow, I see the figure of a beast. My breath becomes short. My heart fills with dread as I frantically try to clear my eyes. I can hear the low rolling growl like the sounds of some ancient horror from the depths of the past. Decide I should turn back. I probably just need to rest. I've had a long trip.
wish you could love me when you were sober. But I know it's when you don't want me around. And I know you say that you want me You must be swimming in drinks and I don't mean I'm not gonna be loving you Next time you're coming around And I know you say you're trying to get better Well I've been there And I've tried that But I always give Wish I could have loved you and stayed sober, but I know I was just fooling myself.
I was ugly, but you stopped me in my tracks And you looked me right in the eye And said no one talks about my man like that I once thought I was handsome And it helped that you did too But once you bought your ticket out It all became old news And I thought you That I, I put on a real, real good show And no one can see the pain I go through Cause I, I never let anyone close enough to Now my days are spent lonely I roam through this old house And I ponder what you'd want to do And where you'd take me out And once I thought I heard your voice Coming from behind me But it was just the howling wind And the rustling of the leaves And I thought you ought to know that I put on a real, real good show And no one can see the pain I go through Cause I never let anyone close enough to Well I crawled into the attic and I rummaged through your old clothes They smelt of must and mildew But your scent, it still came through And I curled up hot and tired In that pile you left behind And I cried myself to sleep again Like I did when you first died And I thought you That I put on a real good show No one can see the pain I go through Cause I can never let anyone close enough to
We sat in front of Bailey's, a pizza place across the street from the double-decker bus that got turned into a cafe. We sat there to escape the rain. A hurricane or something had rolled in. It was getting late, and all the leftover pizza that Bailey's had given us was gone. Nowhere to go, we just sat there. I strummed every now and then on my guitar. There was no one else in the streets that night. I guess they were a little smarter than us. The rain was coming down hard, and Dan got up, legs all burnt to shit, and hobbled into the middle of the street and whipped out his dick and took a piss. He came back, his bandages soaked through. We all had a good laugh. I always wanted to take a piss in the middle of this fucking road, he said. Luis asked me if he could roll a cigarette. I dug the pouch out of my guitar bag and took out a paper and some tobacco for myself before tossing it to him. Mary made a hand gesture like she wanted one, and I signaled Luis to pass it along when he was done. The cheap papers stuck to my dry lips and ripped them. I strummed the tune on my guitar, and Luis hummed along. After a while, we walked down a few doors, rain still coming down in torrents, to an art gallery which had at the moment a collection of famous people's portraits done in bottle caps. Eventually, the rain died down and the morning was on its way quick. Most of the tobacco was gone. Luis, Mary, and I parted ways with Dan and Mitch at first light. I had a bus to catch back home, when it was a little bit of a walk to the station. One of my brothers had had a baby, and I decided it would be a good thing for me to be around. Plus, it kind of felt right to get out of town for a little while after being arrested. We stopped at a Waffle House to eat breakfast with the last bit of our money. You could smoke inside, so we took advantage of that. The bus station was rather small. My father had paid for the ticket, so all I had to do was show my ID and pick it up. We went outside for a smoke after the man behind the desk handed me my ticket. The bus was there and scheduled to leave in 10 minutes. When we finished our cigarettes, there was just enough for maybe two more and only one paper. I split the tobacco with them, but I kept the paper. They could try their luck to find one. We said farewell, and they headed back to the mountain. I found a seat about halfway down the bus on the right side. In front of me sat a man whom I had seen many times around town. His name was Tate, I think. He used to hang around sometimes with myself and others while we were busking. Kind of an annoying dude. Yo, what's going on, he asked. Hey, man, how are you, I said. I'm good. Where are you heading? Back home. Jacksonville. Oh, yeah? He looked around before going on. I know a porn star. Yeah, yeah, I cut him off. Stairway told me about her. I can clean her pool or wash the dishes, and I can live in her mansion, right? Yeah, dude. Hot girls, free food and room. That where you heading? I asked. Nah, heading to Valdosta to see my mom. He looked down glumly for a moment before the bus driver's voice came over the speakers, distracting us both. We rode in silence for the rest of the trip. I had no pillow, and sleeping on the bus was a nightmare, especially with the jets of freezing cold air billowing out from the bottom of the windows. When we arrived in Savannah, where I was to transfer to another bus, Tate offered me a cigarette, and I accepted. Hey, man, he said. You hungry? I got an extra fruit cocktail if you want it. Oh, damn, man. Thanks. I really appreciate it, I said, eyeing the fruit cup ravenously. He was a nice guy. My bus apparently was delayed. They said it would be another two or three hours. I only had one rolling paper. This was a major problem. 
I decided that I would hold off smoking the last of my tobacco as long as I could and just scavenge butts from the ashtrays for a while. What I really wanted was some herb, but that wasn't going to happen. It was fine for a little while, but time went by and I finished all the cigarette butts. I sat and read a book. There was some sort of political fiasco being reported on the televisions. I couldn't take it any longer. I rolled up the rest of the tobacco, making sure to get all of it. I sat out front of the station, leaning against the pillar. The sun was going down. It was finally beginning to feel like fall. After a minute, Tate came outside. Hey, Charlie, you got another paper? I got some bud. Fuck, man. That was my last one. I cursed myself for smoking that stupid cigarette. Ah, damn. All right, man. He scuffed his foot on the ground and went back inside. I finished the cigarette in a huff. I'd been at the bus station for about four and a half hours when they finally announced that my bus was in town and nearly to the station. The sun had disappeared when we finally piled onto the bus but the sky was lit up with the most brilliant colors. It would have been more beautiful under other circumstances, but right now I was just tired and wanted to be home. Wanted to sleep in a bed and sit on the ground or on the floor of a squat. But eventually, the bus pulled into the Greyhound station in Jacksonville. I was back. My brother and father picked me up and we got some beer and went home and talked of this and that. I slept on the floor again that night. My brother had moved into my old room. I spend my days thinking of you And so many other pointless pursuits Until I find something new Maybe someone fucked up too I'll keep writing songs for you Oh, the world's not that hard I'm just garbage I'd like to spend my days in a forest But instead I spend my days in the workforce And I complain a lot Though I never take a shot Yes, I'll just sit here and rot Oh, the world's not that hard I'm just garbage
Well, I'm sorry to everyone that I've let down. And I've certainly got a lot of apologies to go around. So maybe this next year will be better. Won't have to write so many sad letters. And I'll forget about you. And I'll quit drinking too Perhaps I'll give it a shot Take a shower, chop off the mop Or maybe not, oh, the world's not that hard I'm just garbage Oh, the world's not that hard